Hi everyone, I am Sam Bettens, transgender man and musician. It is a wonderful 85 degrees in the desert today and we are going to talk about my voice changing or the lack thereof. Probably one of the biggest hurdles in deciding to transition from female to male and to start taking hormones was the thought of potentially losing my singing voice. When you take testosterone, your voice can deepen. The changed voice can be hoarse, weak, and have a much smaller range. Basically, the hormones make the vocal cords grow thicker and that change is irreversible. But us trans guys take testosterone because we want changes. Some are good, like building muscle, some are not so good. Most trans guys can't wait for their voice to change. As you're trying to pass as male, the color and the sound of your voice can be a huge factor. For me personally, it's a double-edged sword. On one hand, I'm starting to hate being misgendered more and more. So it bothers me that my voice often makes people do a double take and then decide I must be female. On the flip side, my singing voice is my livelihood, my instrument, my stamp, if you will. So the thought of losing it is pretty scary. Five months into taking hormones, I'm not sure how I feel about my voice not changing. I read in the comments that some of you seem to have detected a little change already, but I haven't, and for sure it's not enough to be all the way believable as a male. I'm grateful, of course, that all the shows went well this summer and that I should be good for upcoming shows and promo with Rex Rebel and Case Choice in October. But I have to wonder, what if my voice never really changes? I'm not sure I was fully prepared for that possibility. It's out of my hands, of course. Uncertainty is a price you pay with hormone replacement therapy, so my feelings won't alter the outcome, but I just don't know what to even wish for. As I'm slowly getting more and more comfortable in my gender, I've noticed that I do care that people get it right. So in a way, I am waiting for my voice to drop. Always hoping, of course, that I'll still be able to sing and that I won't sound like a total turd. Because it's one thing to hold or hit a note. It's a whole other thing to produce a sound that's actually pleasing to others. So much so that they spend money on tickets, deal with traffic, walk through the rain, stand in line and overpay babysitters just to hear it live. I've been pretty well distracted by family, work, and other things regarding my transition to not worry about this every day. But as time passes and nothing big has happened, it's on my mind more and more. I've considered training myself to speak with a more masculine tone, and that may be what I end up doing one day. I've never disliked my speaking voice before, but now it's threatening to slip into dysphoria territory, and that's new. This is just one piece of the transition puzzle that I haven't found the right fit for just yet. By sheer coincidence, my voice started sounding hoarse yesterday, but that could be for any number of reasons. Could be the heavy partying I did the other night. Just kidding. I'm in bed by nine every night watching Downton Abbey. So this is not necessarily the start of something. To be continued, I guess. Let's talk about my birthday. Birthdays are less and less exciting the older you get, but I still had a great week. My wife and I were able to sneak away for a couple of days to the coast, so that was a nice treat mid-recovery. My oldest brother sent me a message, happy first birthday, baby brother, which made me smile. Birthdays are a good time to take stock. And as I take stock of everything that's happened in the last year, I must conclude that all is well. And even with all the changes that have occurred, I can still count on the same people wishing me well. Getting older still sucks, especially orthopedically. My family still wakes me up with breakfast in bed, gifts and a candle to blow out. Our old manager, Will, and my friend Leslie sing Elvis Presley happy birthday versions through the phone, but Leslie won't leave it on the voicemail because she's a diva. Gert's family sends a little video and my parents call with an enthusiastic rendition of Lang Leve, the male version this year. It's nice to have things you can count on. And speaking of things you can count on, I counted on taking the Velcro strap that's been wrapped around my chest off yesterday, but turns out I have to wear it for one more week. Nothing bad. I just had some fluid buildup that they had to aspirate. So it's safer to keep it on for one more week. But man, I've been waking up in the night wanting to scratch so hard I could draw blood. That's how itchy this thing is getting. All part of it could be worse. Also, I did not get the green light for exercise, not even light exercise. So walking the dog is all I'm gonna get for the next two weeks. Good thing for Kanga, not so good for me going stir crazy. Chest has to heal, I get it, but I would kill for a workout right now. I don't want my arms to get flabby. That's it for my weekly update, folks. I hope it did something for you. If it did, 
please hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. It's the button on the bottom right. The more subscribers I get, the easier these vlogs can be found by people who may benefit from them. Share with your friends, leave a comment, I like reading them, and as always, I love you, I appreciate you. Hang loose. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear dad. Happy birthday to you. Thanks, guys. Oh, look at that. Oh, my gosh, Charlie. Oh, what? My hands are sore. Oh, what a feast. Make a wish. Ah, okay. Um. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Today's my dad's birthday. He is not very young. He just turned a little bit old. He is going to San Diego in his new Jeep we bought a couple weeks before his birthday. He has brown hair, blue eyes, and some wrinkles. Bye. Take my shoes off to